Hi, welcome back uh, to Maths Plus with Armin. Uh, we're going to continue with calculus and we're going to do the second part of calculus. In this case, if you can still remember, we said there are some applications and we're going to do two types of applications in this lesson here. The one is we're going to look at rates of change and equations of tangents to curves. In this lesson, we're going to look at the concept of rate of of change and some real life problems. Then we're going to look at the concept of equations of tangents and some real life problems. And then, as usual, there'll be an exercise worksheet for you to practice these two applications. Okay, before we actually start, let's just have a quick revision of uh, the differentiation rules, application of the differentiation rules that we did in the first slide, the uh, first lesson. There are five problems here, one, two, three, four, five, and I give you, I'll be very generous, I give you 30 seconds for each. Come quickly, just write down the answers, don't need to write down the actual question. Okay, ready. First one, let's check your answer. That's right, 6x squared plus 18x plus 14. What happened to the negative 24? That's right, the derivative is zero can still remember why is it zero? That's right, the gradient of a constant is going to be zero. The next one, negative 9x squared plus 10x subtract 16. Be careful there with the negative. That one, 12x squared minus 22x minus 2. This one, be careful here. Negative 3x squared plus 2bx minus 2a. The last one, 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. Okay, so now it's ready. This is what you're going to need. Just be able to use your differentiation. Now, the first one you're going to look at is rates of change and some real life applications there. There are two types of rate of change that we're going to look at. First one is average rate of change. And the other one, instantaneous rate of change. Let's start with the average rate of change. Average rate of change of function defined by fx between x equal to a and x equal to b. So that here, be, with the average rate of change, we use our gradient formula. In this case, if we use it in function notation, it's fa minus fb over a minus b. You can also do it the other way around fb minus fa, then it has to be b minus a. So it's just your gradient that you're calculating here. Instantaneous, the rate of change of the output variable fx with respect to the input variable x at the point. You see, there's a point. There we had points at the point where x is equal to a. And that's what we refer at the instant where x is equal to a. <coughs> In this one here, excuse me, we're going to determine the first derivative. And after determining the first derivative, we're going to substitute the value x equal to a into that first derivative expression there. And that will be your instantaneous rate of change. Very simple. Average is just one procedure to have to follow. Substitution into your gradient formula. Instantaneous rate, you need to first differentiate and then substitute. Remember, first differentiate and then substitute, not the other way around. We're going to look at uh, two rate of change uh, application examples. During an experiment, the concentration of glucose in the human body, Mt, varied according to the formula Mt equal to 4,8 minus 0,3 t squared, where t represents time. First question, find the average rate of change of the concentration between t equal to 1 and t equal to 2. Notice when they have average, they have to provide you with two values here. Average rate, we use the gradient formula. In this case, we have it in function notation, m1 minus m2 over 1 minus 2, or you can say m2 minus m1, then I have to say 2 subtract 1. Please be careful of the order there. So let's do that. First of all, let's do the easy part. What is the easy part? That's right, just 1 subtract 2. 
we start with the easy things first. M1, substitute M1 in there. Then you substitute M2, so you have to, you have to put the 2 into that, you get that. This is now just simple calculator work, and you're supposed to get this correct without any errors there. So that gives us negative 0, 0,9, or you might even have negative 9 over 10. Let's look at the second question. Determine the rate of change. You see rate of change of the, when t, there's only one value there. This is actually asking us for the instantaneous rate. What are the steps we said there? Write in the correct order. First differentiate and then substitute. So what do we have to differentiate? Differentiate m prime t that gives us negative 0 comma 6 t and then we have to substitute what do we have to substitute they said t equal to 3 so if we substitute 3 into the derivative there we end up with negative 1 comma 8 now they ask us here interpret the answer obtained in b so there's the answer in b this is a rate so how can we interpret this Look at the value of that rate. What type of value is that? I know it's decimal, but it's actually a, that's right, a negative number. And when you have a rate that is negative, what does it indicate to me? That the constant, that the rate is actually a decreasing rate. In this case, it's just in context, the concentration rate of glucose is decreasing. Let's take a second example. A particle, an object, moves along a straight line. The distance s in meters of the particle from a fixed point on the line at time t seconds is given by. So t is in, the time is in seconds. Let's see the question here. Give the particle's initial distance from the fixed point. Initial distance? What do we mean by initial? That's right, the start. Or else the beginning. So you start at... The time would be, what would the time be? That's whenever you have initial, time is zero. So I substitute t equal to zero. So that will be s zero. We substitute that. We end up with 45. And s is the distance. So the unit should be 45 meters. But the next question. Calculate the particle's initial velocity. Now the other just help you. Those who do physical science would know what velocity is. Velocity is the rate of change of distance over time, or distance with respect to time. So we have initial velocity. What does initial mean? It's when time is zero. So how do we determine the, the rate of change? That's correct. Let's differentiate. So we take the distance, we differentiate that, which gives us 40 minus 18. And after differentiating, I need to substitute, but which value? There's no value given, but the clue here is initial. And initial means when time is zero. So I work out, substitute t equal to zero, then I end up with four times zero, subtract 18, which gives us negative 18 meters per second. Right? If they asked us to interpret this, what would we say here? That the velocity is decreasing. Now we're going to look at the <coughs> second uh, application here, yeah? equation of tangents to curves. Remember as we said, we used to do in analytical geometry equation of tangents to circles. Now we're going to look at tangents to any uh, type of curve there. So let's look at the general procedure. Let's say there we want to determine the equation of the tangent to the curve defined by and there they give you the equation there. At a point, x equal to k. Remember a tangent? To touch a curve at one point. So let's look at the general procedure. They give us x, so we can determine the corresponding y value. How do we do that? That's correct. Substitute x equal to a in your expression, then you work out calculate fa. The next thing we find the first derivative. So you have to take your equation and you differentiate. Right? So we'll do differentiation. The next thing we have to determine the gradient. But remember this first derivative is actually the gradient of a tangent. So the gradient m 
will be the first derivative and but now after we but it needs to be first derivative when I have x equal to a so I must substitute a into the first derivative then we're going to find the equation what is a tangent that's correct it's a straight line and it's advisable for you to rather make use of this formula for determining the straight line we have a gradient and a point you see there you've got an x and a y so there's a point and you have this so this will be much easier to have this instead of using the other formula you know the other one y and y equal to mx plus c is the one that you're going to end up with let's look at an example this is a very direct example determine the equation of a tangent straightforward defined by there you have an equation for the curve and at the particular point so the first thing we have to do is they give you a x you first find the corresponding y how do we do that we calculate f negative 2 and if you calculate that that gives us 8 next we have to differentiate come try to differentiate that flawlessly negative 6x squared plus 4 now after that we need to get a gradient and the gradient m is the same as the derivative but I substitute x equal to negative 2 into this not into that and there the gradient is negative 20 and now we're ready equation of a tangent it's a straight line so I use a straight line formula it's provided to you on the info sheet then you substitute what is m m is negative 20 x1 is negative 2 and y1 is going to be there we worked it out as 8 substitute there the only thing I need to do is try to simplify that transpose the negative 16 and then there's my equation there's it now in the form negative mx plus uh, negative 20x negative 24 which is the same as y equal to mx plus c okay. I recommend that you preferably use this so that you end up like that but if you want to use the y equal to mx plus c no problem at all Let's look at one more example on equation of tangents. This particular one, I refer to it as an indirect. Let's see why indirect. The equation of the tangent to the curve of G, defined by that, is given by. Which one is the equation of the tangent? This or that? That's correct. It is the linear one. Why? Because the tangent is a straight line. This is not the tangent's equation. Determine the point of contact. What do we mean by that? That's correct find the x and the y what does this mean x greater than naught means the x coordinate is positive so let's see we 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 don't have the x we don't have the y we can use the equation to find m and we still need to differentiate see these are the five components of the of such a question a x and a y and a m and a different derivative and an equation so equation we've got we have we can use the equation to find the gradient we've got the curve so we can differentiate and then we can find the x and the y so let's see the gradient of the tangent I take my equation write it in standard form and what's the gradient there correct m is equal to 5 then we need to differentiate let's find the derivative try the derivative that's correct 3x squared plus 2 now we need to know that the derivative there is the derivative, but the derivative there is the same as the gradient, which means 3x squared plus 2 is equal to 5. This is equal to the gradient. That is a quadratic. Transpose the 2 becomes a 3. Divide by 3, so I end up with x squared equal to 1. So if x squared is equal to 1, what should x usually be? That's correct. x is equal to plus or minus 1. However, they told us here x is greater than zero so we do not want the negative value okay if this was not given we had to give both answers there now did we answer the question that's only the x value we also have to, they said point of contact which means the x as well as the y see they gave us this we did this we could find that we now have the x so then we have to see you ought to get all five of them there so the corresponding y so I must substitute 1. In which one can I substitute 1? Either into the G or I can substitute it into this here. There's also a Y. Which one will be the easier? It's always better to take do the easier one. There's less chance of making a mistake there.
but irrespective whether you put one into that one or into that you'll get exactly the same answer in this case it's six now let's answer the question point of contact is the x and the y which is one and six there this, uh, those are the types of examples you can get you know on rates of change there are two types average and instantaneous average you use the formula instantaneous you differentiate substitute equation of a tangent the five steps what are they again x value y value differentiate m value equation right those five components just have those five on your uh, fingertips there so but before you actually do this exercise as before remember i always recommend you try the worked out examples on your own without looking at the solution then com compare your solution with the provided solution on the slide and then once you've done that you need to do that let's look at an example here there we have an example and there we say determine the rate right just the rate not average rate determine the rate of change here we say initial you know what initial means determine the temperature when t is 3 determine the rate when it's changing and there they want us to interpret then we have some questions on tangents they, this is a direct they give us the curve and they give us the point here they give us the equation but they want to know what is that k value there remember the five components align with the gradient of negative 11 what do they tell you here m is negative 11 here they want the x coordinate of the possible see there are two possible answers here yeah a few uh, other questions on equations of tangent uh, this one here we can see is a direct one right? you have to find the equation of a tangent here the equation of the tangent is given you have to find some values of a and b the equation of the tangent here we have to find a point of contact recall something similar to one of our examples determine the value of k if that is a tangent the equation is given so the gradient is known we can differentiate put it equal to the gradient then we can find x and y and once we have x and y we'll be able to find k and those are the types of examples you can get uh, thank you i wish uh, this video helped you and if you need the solutions to this, if you subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, I will provide you with the solutions. Right? Until the next part, part three, we'll be introducing you to sketching of cubic equations. Thank you very much.